Thank you for showing up. My name is Nick Didlick, and I'm okay with my name. Uh, I'm a, I've been a commercial and editorial photographer for 42 years. As uh, was, was talk, told you, I, um, I switched from another major camera brand uh, in uh, March of this year, and that's what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about. So what I'm, what I'm going to talk to you about is a thing I call magic moments. And for anybody that hasn't experienced a Sony A9, uh, you'll see that why I call it magic moments is because when you shoot a camera at 20 frames per second, you start to see things in your still pictures that your human eye uh, couldn't, uh, couldn't catch. So uh, I'm based in Vancouver, Canada, if I didn't tell you that before. Um, I do a lot of editorial assignments and I actually do a fair bit of commercial and video work. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna play a little video here for you so that you get an idea of the kinds of stuff I do. hate it when people applause because I'm used to looking from behind here trying to be a fly on the wall. Uh, the reason I called it magic moments was because of the things that are happening in between a frame. If you're not familiar with a Sony A9, um, it shoots at 20 frames per second, it has eye tracking autofocus, and it's completely silent. Those are three reasons for me to switch from another camera brand that I've been after for a number of years. And it's, it's pretty exciting shooting at 20 frames a second, but it's also daunting because you end up with way more choices and way more data. So the first event I took it to was the Kentucky Derby. Um, and luckily Sony Pro Support had actually uh, loaned me five A9s to go along with my one. And I was able to position them around the track and do a whole bunch of things. And this still picture comes from a series of pictures. So when you're shooting uh, continuously at 20 frames per second, it looks like this. And so you're able to pick moments when a horse has all four hooves off the ground, there's mud flying, there's a whole bunch of other things. And when I first saw this at the Kentucky Derby, it reminded me of Edward Maybridge's pictures for the horse all off the ground, taken in 1878. And I'm able to do that inside this, uh, this camera. It was called Horse Emotion back then. 
And so I was able to pick that still picture from that frame. And so instantly I became enamored with what, I, what my eye wasn't seeing, but my camera was seeing. This is the same Bolt. This is in the 4x100 this year in uh, London, England. And you can see he's actually rolling on the track. And this is taken from a remote camera. So normally I work with four cameras, either two or three handheld, or two or three on remote, or a combination of those things. And this is what that sequence looked like. So you can see that uh, during the 4x100 relay, he pulled up with a leg cramp. Uh, there's a whole bunch of reasons why that happened. But he pulled up with a leg cramp. And of course, this is what I'm focused on as he rolls over. And that's almost in real time. But watch other things that goes on in this frame. I start to see all sorts of other things happening that I've never noticed before in the editing. This, the Great Britain guy on the left, he's not screaming because Usain Bolt pulled out of the race. He's actually watching his team member on the score clock. So he's not celebrating the same bolts pulling out, though that's what it looks like. So these are just still pictures stitched together and shown as a, as a, as a, complete, a complete video. So you get an idea of what's possible. But then when you start looking at 20 frames per second, you start seeing all sorts of all moments that your eye didn't see. Gymnastics, this is the World Gymnastics Championship, but watching not only the action, but the hand and the hair. And so you're able to start to pick certain frames from inside the sequence. And that's what's really exciting. As a sports photographer, I'm seeing things that I used to see maybe every 10 competitors. I'll see them almost every competitor now because I'm shooting about 40% faster uh, number of frames than anybody else. This is a gold medal performance on the beam, for instance. Right? Same thing, you know, uh, if anybody's been to a rodeo, rodeo is a little difficult to, to watch, but I can watch for individual detail now that's 20 frames, but I can watch for rocks, how far away from the hat this is, what's reflected in the size, because I'm getting to have a lot more options than I ever had before. This was one moment I didn't see. This is actually a horse, jump, it's a bucking bronc who's thrown the rider off, thrown the rider off and then jumps on his back the guy wasn't that injured. There's a whole story behind that. He got up and walked away, pretty tough cowboy. But the horse looks like he's laughing at him, right? So I'm able to carefully pick those frames. This is what it looked like as I shot it. Come on. And that video doesn't want to work. So there's a, there's a video that shows the horse uh, tromping all over him. But all sorts of things I'm seeing that I never saw him before. This is Amy Tinkler. She's a great Britain gymnast. But look at the chalk flying off her hands, and you can still see her face. So with other cameras, you still get those kinds of selections, but you might not have had just her face because it would be either hidden by her leg or some other, other part of her body. Right? Eyes. This is Miriam Shepanova at the, at the US Open Tennis Championships. But now that I'm shooting at 20 frames per second, I'm actually seeing more expressive moments. I'm getting more choices for expressive moments happening. So normally you're always trying to get, you know, ball, and you know, it's really a great picture when you get the ball right in front of their eye. Um, unfortunately, this didn't happen, but the intensity of her eyes was what made me move this picture. Okay. Oh, two frames, can't go backwards. Uh, this is uh, Sloane Stevens, so she won the women's title at the, uh, at the US Open. And it was, a, it was a nice moment. She's obviously recognizing somebody in the crowd. She's got the cup up there. But when you have that much horsepower behind your camera, as soon as something happens, you're off to 20 frames a second. So when the top fell off the trophy, I was able to get a nice sequence of the top falling off the trophy all the way to the ground, and then somebody else rushing over to pick it up and all put it together. So it almost looks like video, uh, but of course you're shooting in RAW plus JPEG uh, at 24 megapixels, and so you get a lot, a lot, more, a lot more detail, right? So 20 frames a second was one of the things that attracted me to the camera. The second thing was eye tracking. The ability of the camera to figure out where your face is and then focus on your dominant eye. And it can do that at 20 frames a second while somebody's running. So I'll, I, used, I used Amy T Tinkler here again. And this video probably won't play because I, I, I don't know why half this happened. But you're going to see that her eye, she runs up at 10 frames a second because it's on adapted lens. So when I adapt a Sony lens or a Canon lens or other lens to my A9, it drops the frame rate. But it was able to eye track her all the way and you can start to see the blow up, right? So it's that sharp on her eye because for me, 
in photography, especially in sports photography, the eyes always tell a story, and that's what's really most important for me. Right? Yeah, Venus Williams. And just the other revolutionary thing about eye tracking is it does, it, once it knows that's that you're focused on that eye, it will stay on that eye. Even if something comes in front of the face to block the face, it will still stay on that eyeball. Here's Sloane Stevens again. Her racket's in front of her face, but because the camera can pick up the face, right, the eyes, the nose thing, it will focus through the racket on her face because it wants that eyeball every time. It's almost like a magnet that sticks to that, to that target, which is one of the great things about it, right? UFC, Jesse Taylor. And if, if ever, if, has anybody been to a UFC fight before? Right, you've got to shoot through a chain link fence. And you can imagine what chain link fence would do to your traditional cameras. <clears throat> you either have to manually focus or, or hope and pray. But with eye tracking, as long as it can find the face, it will go to the eyeball. If it can't find the face, it goes to you know, the head. If it can't find the head, it goes to a body. If it can't find the body, it goes like to the area. And as soon as they can find the face, it goes ripping right back to the eyeball again. And so when I've shot tennis with it, for instance, you know, a visor comes down, can't see the face, it'll grab the head, which is pretty, pretty amazing, right? So it actually stays on the eyeball. So when it stays on the eyeball, you're not having the autofocus jump to the racket or to the ball or to something else. It's going to stay on that face, which, which you, you can imagine, if this picture was focused on that tennis ball, it wouldn't be a picture at all, except for probably Wilson or uh, you know, some other, other, other commercial, right? So the eyes are the most important thing for me in sports photography. You, know, you can see here that uh, Melissa Bishop and her eyes, she's looking up the score clock and the catch lights come for her eyes, and that's what I was looking for as she came around. I've been a photojournalist for 42 years. One of the things I've always tried to do is have a small footprint to take a very little room and be as quiet as I can. Every time I press the shutter and I hear a sound, that breaks the concentration of my subject. So now I can walk around like a fly on the wall and carefully compose and shoot pictures. And I can shoot pictures like this and nobody even notices I'm taking a picture. You can imagine what may have happened if they could hear kerthunk of the mirror and the shutter going up. She would have probably looked up, sat up, uh, maybe trimmed herself up a little bit. The cowboy might have walked out of the frame and you know, done a bunch of things. So you know, as, a, as a journalist, it's a huge thing to have a silent camera. The ability to walk into people when they're having their quiet time or their special moment and not disturb that moment means I'm going to get more pictures and I'm probably going to get better pictures. And that's one of the big strong points, uh, points of this. This is actually a cowboy <coughs> getting ready to go out uh, and do some bronc riding. But look at his hand. That's from being ripped up by the rope from actually hanging on to the horse. Right? Getting in close and not disturbing somebody. That's what really a silent camera is all about. And having that ability gets to give you a bunch more options. So not only am I getting 20 frames per second, and I got a camera that can track an eye, but I also have a camera that's completely silent, which is giving me different pictures than I ever dreamed of or ever thought before. Right? This is a Jamaican Johan Blake getting ready for the uh, uh, 200 meters. Right, he's having a very quiet moment on the corner of the track. Right? McLeod getting ready. But just quiet moments. Right? This is Gatlin after he won the uh, 100 meters. And you know, I'm, I'm probably with my 24, I'm this close to him taking his picture. Now, in this instance, a silent camera didn't mean much because the crowd's roaring. There's another 50 photographers trying to get behind me, and they're all screaming and yelling to get out of the way, and I'm not listening. But you can imagine if that was a quiet moment between a mother and child or some other moment, you wouldn't be disturbing that moment, which is, which is really huge, right? Mo Farah. And so I was able to wander around silently at these championships. One of the things that freaks out my colleagues who are shooting next to me is they don't know when I'm taking a picture. You know, they always joke, oh, you missed that, because they can't hear the kathunk, kathunk, kathunk. But actually, I've got twice as many frames as they did, and they've been razor, razor sharp, right? The other places that this camera can go. So the other thing that the, the A9 brings is the ability to go places where other cameras can't. 
So the start of a 100 meter dash, everybody has to be silent. You can't take a picture till after they left the starting blocks. Well, I can actually start taking pictures when they're in the blocks, when they're out of the blocks, and in that first 10 meters, because my camera makes no noise. And so I'm able to do things like a Tori Bori golf, where you can stand, you know, in golf, you're not allowed to go on the downswing, right? The back, you cannot shoot to this till after contact with the ball, then you can shoot with a noisy camera. With the A9 at the US Open and other championships this year, uh, photographers like me have been able to stand right behind them when they're actually shooting, right? Press conferences, you know, our television and, and audio colleagues love us because we're not, we're not making any noise at all. I got a full frame sensor, 20 frames, tracking an eyeball and not making any noise, which is really, really remarkable. In fact, I switched to digital photography in 1994. I was an early adopter. And I switched to this technology because I think it's the next evolution in professional photography is really what it's about. My colleagues at the White House, um, I used to travel on Air Force One, but my colleagues in the White House now have been waiting for the camera like this to come for a long time. You, when you walk into a press conference with the president, all you can hear is click, 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 all the cameras. There's now a real push to make it silent. The television people want it to be silent, the uh, radio people want it to be silent, and now, for the first time, they can be competitive and silent, right? Lenses. One of the other surprising things about Sony is with their lenses. And um, I come from the other big manufacturers around here, and I always thought they had the best in glass. And one of the things that I found out is that when I started using Sony lenses, and especially like the, the G Master lenses and uh, the Zeiss lenses and a lot of the other G lenses and other lenses in their lineup, and uh, Bob Martin, a very famous sports photographer from the UPA, were having a discussion that these lenses seem to be just a little bit better. This is a 100 to 400 with a teleconverter on a 2X teleconverter. And you can still see like every line in that hat that I'm focused on, right? Kentucky Derby's is big about hats, and so you're still able to see like every piece of netting, even though you know, it's taken on a lens. Oh, I can slow way down. 15 minutes, I'm gonna have a little nap here. The ability to actually uh, you know, capture uh, razor sharp images with really good contrast in different kinds of lighting conditions, right? And this goes through all the glass. So behind you, you can see that there's A-mount glass, which is for the Alpha series, the SLT cameras. There's a 500 F4 back there. There's a 300 228 back there. So they have all sorts of glass that you can adapt to this camera and still have images that you can see every eyelash on somebody. Even when you're working in other kinds of situations, they're sharp. Some of the surprising things I learned. This is a 100 to 400. But I saw this woman with her, uh, her nails done up in a British thing. This is a Mexican long jumper. And I was able to take the 100 to 400, and it focuses incredibly close. Right? This is a huge monster blow up from the 50 mil 1.8. And you can still see every hair and every detail. And she's flying super fast across the top. She's doing a backflip up and over. Right? And so you're capturing that and seeing some of the sharpness. One of the things that happened with Sony that's really surprising is, um, and Neil Manowitz mentioned this a couple of days ago during the, uh, during the launch of uh, the new camera, is that Sony's coming out with a brand new lens every two months. And since I've been a, a Sony guy since April, I'm seeing all sorts of new lenses come out, right? From the 100 to 400, the 12 to 24, the 16 to 35, there's a new one. I can't keep up with the number of lenses that they're announcing. But the, the sharpness of all their lenses, edge to edge, is something that's really astounded me. Almost every lens has a weak point um, when you look at it. I haven't been able to find the ones for these cameras yet. I'm sure there will be one I'll find someday, but at this point, I, you know, I can take a lens and shoot something that's huge and blow it up and still retain that sharpness uh, in the eyes, right? So that when I have a camera that can do all these kinds of features, I'm able to look at, like this is taken with a 12 to 24, but it'll eye track in the corner of the frame because it'll eye track over 93% of the frame. So that means that I can follow an eyeball from here to here, right? Which most other cameras can't do, which was the other reason that I switched so that I'd have a little bit of a competitive edge uh, over the others. 
so there's three things I've talked about. I've talked about 20 frames per second, the kinds of things it gives me. I've talked about silent, and I've talked about eye tracking. And those are three huge reasons that I made a switch uh, to, to this camera. But there's, there's other things that come along. When you cover sports, it's not just about what's in front of you. There's a whole bunch of other things that go on. With a smaller form factor camera, so I'm using an A9, I usually carry three in my camera bag. And so when I carry three A9s, that would have been maybe 1.5 of a traditional DSLR. So I can carry more cameras and more lenses at the same weight and do all sorts of different things, which means I have more options. When I'm out going around, I have way, a lot more options when I'm shooting different kinds of events. Whether I carry them for remotes, whether I carry them from handhelds, I have all sorts of more options, which means that I can actually carry an 85 now all the time for certain moments. This isn't taken with an 85, but I can carry all sorts of lenses that I would maybe never have carried before. One of my big concerns when switching was how durable are the cameras. That, you know, the other manufacturers have got this long legacy of durable cameras. And so I really put it to a torture test. I don't know if anybody was at the Kentucky Derby, but it basically rained heavily for two days. And then just before the final race, the clouds parted and it was beautiful. And so that this camera is a remote camera. It sat in the mud for two days. There was a story on Alpha University. You could see a picture of me like this deep in water. And the camera kept shooting. I was walking around with three A9s. I didn't put camera protection over them because I wanted to see if they would fail. And for two days of walking around, they didn't fail. They're, pr they're pretty waterproof to this point. And I think I've got all sorts of uh, different kinds of pictures I didn't have to think. The other reason for going to Sony or looking at Sony cameras is, is not just because of the A9. I do a lot of photography in different places that require different kinds of cameras. And the ability to have a camera all the time with you is probably the best thing to do. And you, you know, everybody's carrying big, heavy cameras, and we all want smaller and lighter. This is taken with my RX1R. And one of the beauty things, I don't know if you've seen this camera, if you're lucky, you own one of these because it's a full frame sensor, 35 millimeter F2 Zeiss lens in a tiny little camera, right? So, you know, it's been pretty impressive so far that Sony's been racing all these, all these lenses. There's a whole bunch of other things going on. Uh, I don't know if you were around yesterday because one of the big things that a lot of pros say is that, you know, we can't take you seriously because you haven't got a fast, long lens. And then yesterday, uh, Sony announced the development of a 4028, which has really got not only me super excited, but a lot of my colleagues super excited. And so I actually, in the last six months of shooting sports, I've had to make some compromises. I'm a pretty, I may not be the greatest photographer, but I always count myself as being a smart photographer. I know when something's going to happen over there. And so I adapted my shooting style to what lenses I had, and I compromised some of the pictures I may have taken. With the new 4028, it means I'm not going to have to compromise anymore. I'm going to be out there using the 4028, eye tracking, TC, the 1.4 converter, the, 200, or the 2x converter, and I'm going to start doing all sorts of other amazing things to actually see different kinds of moments. So a silent camera that focuses really fast has really earned its place in my camera bag. That's it. Thank you.